Hi, hello. Wow, it's been a while since I've been on here. Oh, by the way, hi, I'm Adrian. I like to talk about science and nutrition. Um, but also, man, I had this crazy idea today and I thought it might be fun. If it's not, then I'll never do it again. My dogs are in here, so if you hear noises, it's them walking around. I can't leave the puppy unattended. I have to watch him at all times or else he'll eat the house. Anyway, so I said on my Instagram like all the struggles that I've had with my skin and um, well, for the past 10 years I've felt really guilty about wearing makeup and it just wasn't fun for me because people tend to be like, oh, like you're just trying to cover up your acne, like, duh. But instead of thinking, it, thinking of it as a way to cover up my flaws, I've been seeing it as more of a way to just have fun. So I was like, hmm, I really want to play with my makeup and like practice and maybe someday it'll be good. I thought, what if I just recorded it and maybe that would be fun. I don't know, maybe it'll be terrible and we'll hate it, but it's an adventure we'll have to take together. I hope the lighting's okay. This is just natural lighting, so also this is terrifying for me to not wear makeup on camera. <sighs> We're just gonna let that go. So here we go. I asked on my Instagram about some things you guys wanted to hear about related to nutrition and research and science and whatever questions you had that I feel like I can answer. I, I wrote down a couple just to blab about today as I do my makeup. I'm sorry for my male viewers who might not really care about the makeup, but we're going to talk about um, endomorphs, ectomorphs, we're going to talk about skin and diet, we're going to talk about what else we got about. We'll see where the day takes us, I don't know. Sorry, I'm very fidgety because I'm so uncomfortable with no makeup on. <laughs> so, okay, I just gotta get over it. I just gotta, just gotta go for it. Disclaimer: This is not a makeup tutorial because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I'm gonna drink coffee, do my makeup, and talk about science. So here we go. I already have my face primed or moisturized, sunscreened, sunscreened. What do I do first? I usually put on this. <laughs> usually, for the past five days, I've been putting on this lip stuff just to like moisturize my lips while I do my makeup so hopefully by the time I get to my lips it's like they're not so chapped. We live in Colorado so oh god it's so dry. It's so dry. It's like I don't know. I don't know what it's like. I always use Clinique. I don't know if you can see this. I don't know what I'm doing. Do I do this thing? I don't know. <gasps> Jesus. Good thing that wasn't open. This is almost empty so and my lips are like crusty at that episode of Spongebob where he doesn't have water and he's in Sandy's house and he's like water it's like that so I start with foundation because I don't know I can't see anything how am I supposed to see what I'm doing kind of just oh <gasps> no got on my shirt put some lines to make me look like a cat okay so first thing on the list while I dab my face away and spread out this <laughs> that was rosy um let's talk about endomorphs exomorphs what is it endomorphs ectomorphs and mesomorphs our classifications of body types and can we just talk about the history of this really quick because i didn't know this until i looked it up because like I, I knew what they were but i wanted to like know the history and like where this came from i did a little bit of digging and wowza who says wowza i don't know so this dude, William Herbert Sheldon, which, what a name, what a name is that? This guy came up with these classifications for body types, and ectomorph is like the tall, like skinnier body type, mesomorph is like muscular and lean, and I think endomorph is like, you're like shorter and have more body fat? I don't really know. I don't I don't understand really. So this guy, William Herbert Sheldon, in the 1940s came up with this. He made these classifications and they, he actually used them for classifying like characteristics. The whole thing stemmed off of his research. Not really research, it was bad. Anyways, this is not working for me. Hello? Oh, <gasps> Jesus! People kind of took that and ran with it and uh, they all tried to use it to classify criminals and say that criminals tend to have like this body type. I think it was the mesomorph. So they tried to use it to class to give like people characteristics, which is really messed up because that's what we call stigma now in the 21st century. <laughs> Who would have thought? Anyways, his data was 
so shady and the way that he collected the data would be illegal now in the present day. <laughs> you cannot do this. But back then, there weren't so many rules, and so he kind of just did whatever he wanted. He, like, took pictures, n nude pictures of people, and they didn't know, like, what he was using them for. And so, you, when you do research, you have to get their written or verbal um, agreement, and they have to know what they're doing. You, like, they have to know, they have to give their consent. So, <laughs> these people did not give their consent. This dude just kind of made up this stuff and he like assigned characteristics to these certain body types, even though there's real no evidence for that. So anyways, then people started using it for like, oh, well, you should train this way based on your body type, which I will say like, I would tell anyone to lift intensely no matter what you look like. Um, but of course your nutrition is going to be individualized to your goals so if you're really lean and you're trying to put on mass that's going to be different obviously from someone who has excuse me from someone who has body fat and um you know wants to put on muscle or get leaner i don't know am i missing something i just don't understand why people make such a big deal out of it. i've seen the ads for like eat for your body type but like what does that really mean like, I would like for them to explain to me what that actually means in real terms and not just like really vague terms because I bet you they wouldn't have a good answer. <laughs> oh, one thing you guys should know about me is I don't wear concealer because I just don't. I don't really care. I kind of stopped caring when I was like 23 like two years ago three years ago how old am i okay so the biggest problem that i have with this with this whole concept is that body types come in so many different flavors right <laughs> like there aren't just three categories of body types there's a whole spectrum of different body sizes and types and shapes and nobody fits just into this perfect little category right there's all this gray area in between and does it really mean anything clinically in the real world? No. I think I'm going to set this because I get so oily. I have makeup all over me. I get so oily so fast. So I'm just going to I'm just going to dab it under here and bake it. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do, but that's what I'm doing. No matter what your body type is, you're going to eat vegetables every day. You're going to drink enough water. You're going to eat lean protein. You're going to eat some fruits every day. And what am I missing? And you're gonna get enough carbs and healthy fats. I don't know, I don't understand what's so hard about that where people have to make it so complicated and then it confuses people. <laughs> it's so dusty. What is this dude's name again? William Herbert Sheldon. How can I forget that name? This myth has been everlasting, but I, why? Anyways, when people try to tell you this, try to make them explain it to you. Like ask, just keep asking questions. Pretty soon you're going to figure out they don't know what they're talking about. That was a little bit harsh. Maybe they do know some things. I'm sure they know some things. So I use the Smashbox Photo Finisher prim prim Primerizer. So we've learned the Sheldon dude is shady. And basically the bottom line is that this is some pseudoscientific nonsense that has somehow persisted, but you know, sometimes pseudoscience does that. It sticks around for a long time. My hat is still all over me. And also you can go from one classification to another. Like you're not set in that classification. You can like change and your body can change a lot. So like, I, don't, I wouldn't be like fixated on any of this stuff. I would ignore it and just go on about your day. When something is has a base in this much pseudoscience, I like you should really question it. It's like homeopathy. If you missed my video about homeopathy, I recommend going back to that. Why am I putting it on like that? Ooh, I need to use this new brush that I bought from Wet n Wild. I like Wet n Wild because their stuff is super cheap. This is like 99 cents and I'm cheap, so. You should question everything. Question everything. That's what I always tell people. Even me, question me, I don't care. Because I'm not gonna talk about something that I don't know about, you know what I mean? When people get super defensive about like, 
well, you should just believe me because this is my experience. Like, the human experience is very subjective. <laughs> Humans by themselves are really, really, really bad at being objective. So, like, even the things that you think that you see, you don't know if you actually saw that because your brain is just trying to fill in the gaps and trying to construct a reality. Your reality isn't really reality. It's not wild. What's real? I don't know. I don't know. So I've got a couple of questions about skin and diet, and I've had people ask me before like what I changed about my diet for my skin. Let me just preface this by saying, first I've been on Spiro, Spirolactone, Spirolactone, Spiro, I don't know. Uh, I've been on that for, since November, yeah, four months. And it's cleared up my skin really nicely. As long as I stay hydrated, because it is a diuretic, as long as I stay hydrated, I really don't have any um, side effects. Anyways, okay, back to skin and diet. I want to look like a clown. So, <laughs> I feel like I just don't know enough about the skin because the skin is this whole other organ and we didn't really study a lot about the skin in school related to diet. It's a specialty, so like I've studied the liver, the kidneys, the lungs, the heart, obviously the digestive tract. <laughs> But the skin is just this whole other organ that it just does so many things and it's so it's such a big organ that I just don't know. I tried cutting out meat and dairy and I didn't do gluten because that's just dumb. Uh, but it didn't help at all and honestly it just caused me more stress trying to not eat those things than if I had just eaten them. And so one thing I learned is that my breakouts are really, really, really triggered by stress. My skin didn't clear up at all. If anything, it got worse. So I'm not a big believer in that. That's my bias, so I'll be openly... I, I'm openly biased about that. <laughs> but I think there is some newer research coming out related to eczema and dairy and gluten. I think it's still like really in its infancy, so I, I would take it with a grain of salt. It's still like very, like pretty new, relatively new. So when people ask me that, I'm like, I don't know, like you really have to just figure it out yourself. I'm sorry, I'm not a dermatologist. I can tell you my experience, but I'm not a dermatologist at the end of the day. But yeah, the, the newer research on eczema has shown that maybe there's some interplay because eczema is like an autoimmune deficiency as far as we know there's a lot of things we still don't know about eczema so it's hard to like really say for sure with things like that you just have to be really really careful about the claims people are making like that's when you really have to question people because i know like eczema can be really uncomfortable <laughs> when things are going bad just have a little bit of faith it's gonna be okay Okay, now let's talk about something else that I actually do know about. Let's talk about sugar addiction. Okay, so there's some um, research done in mice, mind you, that shows that when you... Well, people use it to show that, like, look how addicting sugar is because this mice, these mice can't stop eating it. But, like, when you look at the methodologies of the study, you realize that's probably not what's really going on. And also, they're mice, so you can't really use that to directly translate to humans because humans are a lot more complicated and we live more complicated lives than just sitting in a in a cage so what they do is they put these mice in cages and then they feed them food like regularly and then they feed them just sugar and then they take away some of the sugar from some of the mice and they reintroduce it and when they reintroduce it the mice like go crazy whatever the problem here is that, one, mice are not humans, obviously, last time I checked, and two, when you take something away after feeding it to the mice and then you, and then you reintroduce it, especially something as hedon or as uh, palatable as sugar, it's lighting up the reward system, right? Um, and, and they're like, oh my god, it's lighting up the same receptors as drugs do and cocaine, but so does seeing a cute dog or hugging somebody that you love or listening to music that you really like. You wouldn't say that you're addicted to petting your dog 
light. I am probably, but just because it lights up a reward center doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be bad for you and your life. Have you ever seen somebody go into your pantry and pull out the bag of sugar and just start downing it and pouring it into their mouth? I bet not. So this turned into pink bill. I thought that was red. I should have tried it on my, what is this color? I'm gonna try this very pink glitter. Wow. <laughs> the answer to your question was no, because I know that's never happened. All of these really hyper palatable foods that people are like, oh my God, I'm addicted to sugar. There's a bunch of sugar. Well, guess what else is also in there? There's also a lot of fat. So you really have to think about the whole picture. Are people really addicted to sugar or are they eating too many palatable foods that are really, really easy to over consume on calories? You're just used to eating very high palatable, high calorie, low nutrient foods. Wow, wow, wow. You cannot just rely on my studies to explain something that's so complicated in humans. Usually animal studies are like a starting point. So we observe like this phenomenon that happens and then we have to find a way to try to put the pieces together for humans. But you can't just extra extrapolate those findings and apply it straight to humans because it just doesn't work like that. We're a lot compli more complicated. Oh, we can talk about soy. Where's my eyeliner? Oh, okay, I guess I'm not doing eyeliner. Okay, so we're gonna talk about soy. A lot of people are scared of soy because they've heard like, it gives you boobies. Or, why did I say it like that? <laughs> or like it gives you cancer or, or it like lowers your testosterone. And when I read the research, cause I was gonna do a post about it, but it's honestly so much to write about. It's too hard to just write an Instagram post about. There's actually so much evidence of its protective benefits in men, in women, in postmenopausal women. The negative outcomes were from like really, really <laughs> insanely high amounts of soy to where like the average person would not eat that much soy. Like I, you have to eat like blocks and blocks of tofu <laughs> to get that amount. It, it would be insane. Don't be afraid of soy. Stop letting people make you afraid of food in general. Like, but if I could give you one piece of advice, there are so many people out there who just want to have like the next best, greatest inside scoop on what's going to kill you next. Stop listening to them. Um, where's my eyelash glue? Eyelash glue. Where are you? Hello? I, I've had people tell me that they're scared to eat carrots because of the sugar. I'm gonna tell you right now, nobody ever got fat from eating too many carrots. Now, you can eat too many carrots and become orange. That's a thing. Ow, my eyes are watering. Did I get the glue in my eye? Oh shoot. It'd be so unethical to take people and do research to do to be like, okay, this group, you eat this much soy and you don't eat any soy and see, let's see who gets cancer first. Like, you can't do that. That's unethical, obviously. So, yes, the research is limited. There's always limits to research, right? And that's why you use the body of evidence and not just one study. When someone tries to make a point and they only use one study instead of talking about the literature, like, as an entirety, then that's a red flag. Ding, ding, ding. I put these on backwards. Ow! Ooh, I hope I don't go blind. I don't know what I did. I think I stabbed myself freaking hurt oh my god what was I saying oh yeah so when people use just this like you try to use the scientific consensus consensus on something and then someone's like but look at this one study that was done in seven people like one of the biggest red flags don't fall for that that's when you know they don't have like a true grasp of reality <laughs> of what's going on okay, I'm just gonna bronze a little bit this is, I don't know what this is. Was I supposed to be telling you what I was using? This is Smashbox. Um, if you want to enjoy some tofu sometimes, you shouldn't be scared to do that. Like people are out here fear mongering over nonsense and they're just creating all these food rules for no reason. I'm gonna use a little bit of this blush because why not? Oh god, this is the tart. I, 
oh, I want to be glowy. I want to channel a glazed donut. Ooh, she's a glazed donut. I don't know. Do we like? Do we like? I hope you learned. I can't talk and do this at the same time. I hope you learned something today. I I know this isn't as like sciencey. It didn't come with like all the receipts and stuff. It's really hard to talk and do your makeup at the same time. My glazed donut. Ow, 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 I got a cramp. My hair is not done, but maybe it'll look better with my hair down. I just, I wanted to do something, oh god, what is, this did not make it any better. Today I hope it was still educational and, you know, we learned about endomorphs and ectomorphs. We learned about soy and we learned about sugar and it's not addictive. You're just eating too much crap. Let me know what other things you would want to learn about. Maybe I caused you more confusion today. I don't know. Just let me know. Just let me know what's going on in your head. Thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and watching me struggle to do my makeup. Okay, so have a nice day. Have a nice night. Have a nice week. Whatever it is for you. I don't know when you're watching this. So I will see you guys next time. Bye.